Hey, happy finished Friday, everybody. It's the first day of summer, so all the estate sales, garage sales, um, and furniture that's gonna be sitting on the side of the road is gonna never be the same after I show you what I am today. Um, I have to tell you, I'm kind of jazzed about what I'm gonna show you today because it's it really takes me back to being a furniture manufacturer, which Jean and I manufactured furniture for 25 years. Um, but even before that, as far as rescuing and restoring furniture, and many of you don't know, but I had the opportunity to work in a little bodega in Florence, Italy, where we were using these processes and these skills to be able to come back and use them on furniture pieces that we had made to make them look like they had some age to them. So there's some techniques and things that you're gonna learn in this process that I am telling you is going to change the way you redo furniture. So I'm really excited. Um, so, as our bundle, as we always have, to be able to make it a little bit easier on you and to have some savings when we show you these finished Fridays, we've put together a bundle of our Toscana milk paint. Remember, our pigments all come from Provence. These are not synthetic. These are all natural pigments, which makes a huge difference in the finish that you get, and our antiquing glaze. So we're gonna be working with both of these today, but this is a bundle. It's special for a $35. So you'll have to be sure and check that out. And we'll have that um, on running on Facebook and Instagram. So welcome Facebook, welcome Instagram. And as always, we think we we have um, the smartest and the most talented customers, um, clients, people that are refinishers that watch this because I love what you do. If you are not part of our Amy Howard at Home Before and After group, you want to join because it is so fun to be able to see what people are doing how they take the techniques that I'm teaching you here and how they turn around and use it to rescue and restore furniture and to do it in their own home, but also to build a business. So a lot of you, you, you may become like me in the fact that it wasn't intentional when I started rescuing and restoring furniture and redoing it. It was something that I enjoy doing and I wanted to be able to have inexpensive things in my home. Um, and it's like an addiction. You love it. It's, it's like it feeds your creativity um, and you want to be able to up your game. You want to be able to raise your level of connoisseurship, and today is going to do that. All right, so we are going to be working on raw wood, and I want to show you three different finishes um, that I had worked on that I'm going to show you. Basically, the technique is the same, but the colors are different. Look at this yummy, yummy new blue. Guys, this is going to be a new blue. It'll be available next week. I'm going to send you out a post about it. Um, but you, you'll want this color. Uh, there was a little cupboard that we showed you on an antique piece. Um, is, sorry, my hands are dirty. I was painting right before we went live. Um, as far as being able to show you how to do this. The other thing is, um, look at this amazing piece. This is done in one of our pale gray colors. It's actually in the bundle this week as far as working with Marche Gray. It doesn't look very gray on this. Um, it goes a little greener when we put the wax on it, but this is a color that will go with any interior. You cannot go wrong um, with doing this finish and this color on your pieces. Can you see that? Can I get that in the light? Does that show up as far as letting you be able to see? Look at the sheen on that, how gorgeous it is. But guys, this is going to look absolutely knocked out on um, a nightstand, a chest of drawers, um, a picture frame, anything that you want to be able to work it on. I love this finish. And then this is done... Um, I'll hold this up as far as you've been able to see it. This is actually done with a black, um, and I allowed a lot of the stain to kind of show through underneath, but this is a gorgeous uh, cabinet-looking finish as well. All right, so one of the first things you're going to need to be able to start with, if you're going to do it like this, because you see a lot of raw wood showing, mm -hmm. you will need to start with a brand new raw piece. Um, so now when I say brand new, it may even be something that you, you can strip it. You want to be able to strip the paint off the finish uh, or the strip the finish off so that way you can start with raw wood. If you don't have raw wood to start with, you can definitely um, go over an existing finish. What I say with the milk paint, it's best to start put the one step paint on first, that acts as a binder, and then we can go from here. So that way if you want to, Start with maybe a, um, a medium value, maybe a Tillier color would be a great color in the one step, and then start and build on top of that. So the reason I say like a Tillier or one of those colors is because if you wear this, like these have been done, you're gonna see that color underneath. So the reason I'm starting with raw wood is because it allows me to be able to see that natural wood underneath this paint that I'm working on. You know, the other thing is too, um, 
and especially if you like flipping furniture, don't forget that every town, no matter how small, have gentlemen and men, for that matter, that are woodworkers, that work out of their garage, that make furniture. If you want to be able to do this on a new piece, contract one of them to make you a farm table or to make you a chest of drawers or a table. And a lot of times they can be fairly inexpensive. Um, so to let you know that the wood that I'm working on is an oak. Um, this is some reclaimed oak wood that we had um, because we used to make a lot of furniture with our oak um, because it's a beautiful hardwood. So one of the first things you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna take your milk paint. Now here's the cool thing about this. This milk paint has no VOCs. A lot of people will say, Amy, are all milk paints alike? Absolutely not, they are not. Um, they are not created equal. Part of what makes ours really beautiful is one is the color selections, but the fact that we don't have synthetic pigments. A synthetic pigment is not going to give you the look that a natural pigment is and does. Um, and we actually ship ours in from Provence. They have all this beautiful French writing on it. And these come from natural quarries. Many of our pigments have been documented back to um, hundreds and hundreds of years, back to the Renaissance, um, used in paintings. So, all right, and frescoes and all that type thing. So look what I'm doing. When you take your milk paint, basically mix up what you need for a project. And it's gonna normally be one part water to one part paint. So you mix it up like this. I usually try to go thicker first and then add a little water. So a lot of you, if you've been tuning in and watching me on Fridays, you're going, Amy, you show us this every time. But guys, here's the deal. Um, a lot of people may be tuning in and they haven't seen it before. So I wanna make sure to show them. So now look, now I'm gonna add more water because I do want it to be thinner. A lot of people think that milk paint has to be thick like regular paint. It does not. The coverage is gonna be shockingly amazing to you but I want you to be able to have it one part water, one part paint, so you can measure them out if you want to. But this is gonna be about the consistency. Now, you'll notice the other thing is, you're gonna have it lumpy. I usually make it the night before. So that's what I did. I've got this color here, actually made it the night before, and I want to, um, here's the other tip that I've gotta show you that's gonna be really, really important. You know, sometimes, I've shown you how you'll dip your brush in the paint and you'll brush it on. Major, major tip. This was worth you watching today because you're gonna learn something that most furniture finishers, if they do this type of finish on it, they sell it for a lot of money because it's very authentic looking, but it's a tip that they don't want you to know. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you all my secrets. Um, you don't wanna use a brush to apply the paint because here's the reason. When you brush it on like this, you are going to have brush marks from painting on the milk paint. I want you, if you want this finish, let's look at this again. See how when you'll see things, it looks like it's just naturally worn away over a period of time. And on this piece right here, where it's been naturally worn away, you've got to apply the paint with a sponge. That way there's no direction. There's no horizontal or there's no vertical direction. It's a really fun and easy thing to do. You're gonna be like, this is so satisfying. Um, but if, if you wanna be able to get this look of finish like you've worn it away. So let me just show you what that looks like. Here's my paint. I mixed it up the night before. Here's my seawool sponge. I'll always put it in water to make sure it's real pliable uh, beforehand. And then dip your sponge. You don't have to use uh, gloves if you don't want to. I like working with my hands. But the milk paint has no VOCs. It's like shopping in the produce aisle. You don't have to worry about um, anything bothering your hands and it will wash out very quickly. It's not gonna mess up your manicures either. Yes. Linda wants to know, is tap water okay or bottled? Tap water is great. And here, I'm, I'm glad Linda, great. So Linda's question is, um, is tap water okay? Does it need to be water, bottled water? No, tap water is fine. But here's the deal. Make sure that it's warm tap water. It's gonna mix better. Cold water with milk paint is, it doesn't blend as well. Don't use really, really hot water, just use warm water and we'll all be good. Instagram, don't let Facebook be the only one that asks questions. I wanna know that my guys on Instagram are following us and asking questions, so love that. Thank you, Linda. Um, if you're catching us right now, we're live from Memphis, Tennessee, and I'm showing you how to create some beautiful, more upscale finishes, um, and I'm giving you some tips now that nobody's gonna tell you. Um, except me. So, but I love teaching my students and I want you to be part of our before and after group 
or you can enjoy the bragging rights from it. All right, so here's the tip. Part of the reason why we're doing this, we've mixed our milk paint, one part water, one part paint, and we are sponging it on because we are not brushing it on because we do not want it to be linear. I don't want horizontal or vertical brush strokes. So I am making sure that as I'm putting it on, it's pretty saturated. Believe it or not, it looks kind of thin right now, but it's not gonna be. But look how I'm being, I'm being very methodical. I'm working my way across. If I want some areas, I can add a little bit more. Try not to make your paint too thick because if you do, it's gonna make it look like it's spongy. So, I'm working on a drawer, I'm working on the top of my piece. I'm gonna work on one section at a time. And guess what? I'm gonna set that aside and what does it look like? It's gonna dry down, it's gonna look just like that. Now, how easy is that? So that way I've got, I don't have any brush strokes going this way or that way. So when I come back to antique it, I'm gonna be able to get this look. This is what I'm going for. So it literally is gonna go from this to this. Is that crazy? Crazy, crazy, crazy. So don't be discouraged. Look at it and go, okay. So now I had raw wood. I've sponged on my milk paint and now I'm getting ready to antique it. So does that help being able to see those? I'm gonna move that over to the side so that way you don't get too confused. All right. So I'm gonna bring this piece over. This is the piece that I'm working on. And I'm going to take my water. Remember we talk about baths. You've got to have baths. I want you to be able to, with your antiquing glaze, you need to be, oh, could I have like a little bowl to put the antiquing glaze in? Um, you've gotta have a bath so that way as you're antiquing it, um, you're going to be cleaning it um, here and here, so that way I'm not getting dirty, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a minute. All right, love questions. That means you're listening. That means you're engaged, so thank you for that. Yes. Tony wants to know, do you have to have a sea wool sponge, or will any kind of sponge work? Okay, Tony. Tony's question is, can any type of sponge work? The answer is no. You've got to have a natural sea wool sponge. The other thing is I want you to notice, mine are kind of ratty. That's intentional. I don't want you to have, when you'll get natural sea wool sponge, they're big. I cut them up so that way I want it to look like this. I like the fact that it's kind of ratty and it'll have a tendency to look a little bit more natural. Um, if they're really big, and uh, let me see if I've got one down here. You'll notice there's two sides to a natural sea wool sponge. There's the part where it was attached. Now see, even all, all, all natural sea wool sponge are not created equal, but this is where it was attached in the ocean like this, and it grew up. So the tentacles of it, see how textured it is? But the underneath side, when it's been cut, it's more open like this, and that's the part that I like to work with. I don't want you working with the tip part of it that would have grown up because you're gonna get these small little tight marks. It's better to have it open like this. Is everybody with me? Yes, Instagram, did you have a question? Yes, Susan said, um, what type of raw wood is your sample on? Okay, so this is oak. I'm working on raw oak. Um, it was reclaimed oak. So uh, most furniture pieces, if you're gonna be getting them from the 30s and 40s, a lot of them were oak, wouldn't you say, Jean? I mean, so that way, if you wanna strip it to be able to get this look. Um, knowing when I, when I can look at creating finishes like this, I'm just gonna tell you guys, um, I know I love a chalk-based paint. I love full coverage, but it doesn't touch this. When, when you want to think about selling furniture, when you want to be able to turn around, um, finishes sell furniture, colors sell furniture. But this looks so authentic um, and so fabulous. This is what we're working on today. Yes. Susan said light or dark? Light or dark? Raw wood should she use? It doesn't matter. So you can be doing this on top of pine, which is more of a soft wood. It's going to be light. You can do it on cherry. You can do it on mahogany. It doesn't matter. I just prefer if you want this look that you start with raw wood. Okay. Yes. Carol wants to know where do you purchase the sponges? Um, you can get them at almost any uh, hardware store. Um, because I'm in so many aces, I'm going to say you can get it at ace hardware. Um, but you can get it at a hardware store and um, you can order them online, but they're natural sea wool sponges, sea wool. You do not want to use like a kitchen sponge. It's got to be a sponge like this in part. And I love, that's why 
I love the fact that you you ask questions, all of you, because we all learn. That way I can I can teach and tell everybody else that's watching and they can say, Okay, I didn't know that. So it's like what would be the difference between using a natural seawall and a um, in a regular kitchen synthetic sponge. So yes, love this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making me feel loved that you're listening. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of my antiquing glaze and I'm going to put this in here. There's a safety thing on it. So I'll just pour it out. All right. So I've got two containers. So I'm going to load this up here. And I'm gonna squeeze it out, and you'll notice I put it in water just to make sure that it's um, it's nice and pliable. So I'm gonna come over here, and then I love the fact that um, with this finish, you'll notice we aren't using sandpaper. You cannot get a natural looking worn finish using sandpaper, guys, you just can't. It looks contrived. It looks like a wild animal got loose on it or it's been drugged down a pickup road. I can say that because I'm from the South. Now, notice the other thing that I'm starting to do. As I get, I do one pass. So when you're working on a piece of furniture, you're working on the top, you're working on the drawers, you're working on a side, you've got to put it into sections so you've got control on it. The other thing is notice that I'm gonna have to lay it down and work on it. You cannot work on this with it standing up. So I'm gonna lay it down so I've got control over it. That's gonna allow me to be able to do a better job. So once I do that first pass, look what I'll start doing. I'll start putting a little bit more pressure in and pulling that off. Is that nuts? Okay, now let me get a rag and I'm just gonna pat it just a little bit. Look at that. See how natural that looks? Let's go back to the piece that I'm showing you. Let's look at this. So this is a finish that I'm showing you how to be able to recreate. There again, if you're just now tuning in, please go back and watch it from the beginning because you cannot brush this on. You've got to also apply the paint itself with the seawall sponge. It's gonna make a huge difference in the final result of your finish. All right, so look at this. As I am putting this on, it is now becoming a negative tool, meaning I am removing the paint and there's gonna be paint in my sponge. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna put it down in my water and I'm gonna squeeze it out. And notice how I'll have two baths here because as this one gets kind of saturated and dirty, I've got another one that I can go to. So after I clean it out with each pass, now I come back over here to my antiquing glaze. Now I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna to start to wear this just a little bit more and I'm gonna decide, it's like, do I want more warm? So where would we pull more out? Think about naturally where a piece of furniture is gonna get wear. It's gonna get it around the bottom of the, uh, the legs of the chair. It's gonna get it around the handles where that piece has been used. It's gonna get it more around the edges. That's what you want to pull off. That's where you're gonna get the wear, yes. Nikki wants to know, can this work on MDF? Hmm. It's not going to be as pretty on MDF. I would prefer, it's not going to be as pretty on MDF. I'm sorry, Nikki. So Nikki's question was, can you work with this on, on MDF? The answer is no. I would really prefer to work with just a regular standard wood. So, And I even looked at Gene. He's standing over here shaking jars of paint. I'm like, what do you think? He's like, ah, I don't think so. This is a really sophisticated finish. Um, it can look fabulous on stuff. And I'll be honest with you, if you're just now getting started flipping furniture, even doing pieces, you can do these finishes on picture frames and they're amazing because they're a small area that you're working on. All right. So I've got part of this that I had done prior to today and it was already dry. When this dries down, oh, I got a little bit of it wet. When this dries down, Jean, do you, go, do you mind hitting that with a hair dryer for me just really quickly? When it dries down, it's gonna go um, white again. It's gonna go back to that really pretty pale gray, and then we're gonna change it. It's gonna change again when we start to do our waxing process on it. So he's gonna hit that with a hair dryer for me really quick, um, and I wanna show you some of the black first, and then we're gonna go in and I'll show you the waxing process. Yes. Nancy asks, what kind of cloth are you using to offload a pack? So, gosh, I have the best students. Okay, this is Nancy asking this question. She's saying, what kind of cloth are you using? Look at this, let's get a close up of it. This is a, um, a lint-free rag. Do not get bath towels and cut them up. 
that have little loops on them. You need to work with a lint-free rag when you're doing this. Um, I don't want to get lint down in my finish, and I especially don't want to use it when I get ready to do my waxes. So um, you want to use a lint-free rag. That's what this is. So sometimes um, I'll do an on and an off when I'm doing it with my sponge, and I'll pat it so I can see what's going on. So I did the same thing with this one. This is done with my um, Noir. This is with our black milk paint. So I mixed it one part water, one part um, pigment of my milk paint, and then I sponged it on and it dried down to this, okay? So I want you to be able to see that's what it's going to dry down and that's what it's going to look like, which I think looks pretty amazing within itself. Now, same thing again. I'm going to load back up some antiquing glaze. And I'm coming back over it like this. That, this first pass, I'll get it pretty much everywhere. You don't see any negative space. The whole thing is covered up. So do your one pass like this. Now, look, see how it's take all already just with a simple, easy pass. I've got a little paint on there. What do I need to do? I need to clean it out. So I'm gonna put it in my water. I'm gonna come back over here into my antiquing glaze. And then I'm gonna focus on the outside area. I'm gonna press into that just a little bit. And I do this to kind of see where I can see what I'm doing. Look at that. See how it, that's releasing that black paint from that edge? That's what's gonna make it look like it's been worn over a period of time. When you've got a piece of furniture somebody's touched over a period of time, it's worn. You can't get that look with sandpaper, guys. That's why this is so important as far as being able to do this finish and what I'm showing you today. All right, so that's gonna dry down. I think Jean has brought this back to me. So let's take a look. So that has dried back down from what we antiqued from the white. That's a pretty major difference, isn't it? I'm loving that. Okay, now here's the other real important step that we're gonna do. You've always, always, always got to seal milk paint. You cannot leave it alone. It's not hardy enough. Uh, to be able to handle um, being by itself. It's got to be sealed. But the great thing about it is the sealing process for milk paint can really take it to another level. So if you think about a lot of the antiques, and this is what we're replicating, we're replicating this vintage chic look that you will see in antique shops, which if you've heard any stories when Jean and I have gone to Paris or Italy or different parts of France, I'm the worst person to go shopping with because I start crying, I'm like running my hands all over the piece of furniture and feeling that and thinking historically like what what kind of clothes did the people wear what kind of house was this in what was going on politically i mean it's like it just takes me into my art history days and everything and i get real emotional and anybody that's ever heard this story when we were in the paris flea market and i was doing this i am crying i am telling the antiques dealer um how beautiful this piece was and Gene and his graciousness, he's a Southern gentleman, he pulls me off to the side and he says, honey, I gotta tell you something. These people don't speak English and we don't speak French. When you start going up and you are crying and you are touching that piece of furniture, I assure you, the price of that piece just went up. So have your moment, but we can't shop together. Like you need to move on out and then that way I'll negotiate. That's a true story. So from here on out, we, when we go shopping, I'm 15 or 20 feet in front of him. The girls that are doing the camera are dying laughing. <laughs> but that's a true story because finishes sell furniture. And that's why I want to be able to show you how to create these finishes that would be on furniture that you would see at the Paris flea market or you would see in a really great antique shop in Italy because that's where I was learning in the bodega in Italy. And these are the finishes that are being done. So when you're trying to replicate those finishes, you cannot use the same products that are being sold on the shelf today. You've got to go back to the purity and how they were using it. They were using casein paints. They were using, which is milk paints. That's what they were using. And they were finishing them. They were putting on top of them to preserve them with natural bees waxes. That's why it's important to me that to show you how to be able to do the beeswax. So the first one you've got to be able to do is this one. The reason, they're totally different. Now, let me grab this off the shelf back here. A lot of people were like, well, I like your Mondrone beeswax. I like your squeezable. This is great. Do you see the color? Look at the color difference. When you're trying to do a finish like this, let's stick with this wax. 
because, see the color difference? This, this does have natural beeswax in it. It's that warmer color. It's a combination of carnauba and natural beeswax. So you get that light, um, pretty ambery kind of color that looks antique. Because look at this. Here it is before, and here it is after it's waxed. See that color difference, what's gonna happen uh, when I put this on here. Now, let me show you. Do we have any questions? Okay, yes. Carol wants to know, would this work on an antique trunk that I think is made out of meta? That's stumping me. What's meta? Oh, Met metal. Oh, okay. It's metal. A okay, it's made out of metal. Um, you know what? Uh, yeah, I think, look it over at Jean. I think it's best to stay with the wood. Now, a lot of times with trunks, you know, there'll be um, wood parts and metal parts, but I think just for the greatest success, we probably need to stick to, to wood if we can. Um, yes, that's my gut, just, just my gut response. Let's stick with, with wood. All right, love these questions though. Okay, so after we have antiqued it, we sponge it on. If you're just now tuning in, please go back to the beginning where I'm showing you how to apply the paint, how to mix the paint. We've antiqued it. Now we're gonna come back and remember, as always, I tell you to get two different brushes. I like a smaller brush for my dark wax. Um, I could have a little bigger brush for my light antique wax, but I wanna have two brushes. I don't wanna mix um, the light antique wax and the dark, dark wax. So I've got a brush for each. I can write on there. And remember, when you're working with the wax, guys, it's not, um, it's not water-based, this is petroleum-based. You have to be able to have that for wax to be able to be put onto a surface. So you can use the clean slate to clean your brushes. Your brushes are not gonna clean with soap and water from this. All right, so I'm gonna lay this down. Again, just like when I'm painting it, just like when I'm antiquing it, I'm going to apply my wax. Look how I'm constantly, I'll move it, it's cr I'm cross-hatching. Look at that. So I'm constantly moving my wrist. I don't come in and just apply wax horizontally or vertically. I'm constantly moving my wrist like this. You can also use our hog hair brush. We have a round hog hair that's great for this. And don't oversaturate it. A lot of times people get way too much wax on. Yes. Tony said, should you stick with one color of milk paint or can you layer different colors? <gasps> oh, Tony, I love you. Mm -hmm. I love Jean Howard, but I love your question, Tony. Yes, this is so fabulous. You can layer different colors. Why, because look at this. This, while we're showing, this is only one single color, and then we're allowing that stain to show underneath. But what, for instance, what if we had a beautiful brown under here? What if we had a beautiful green? What if we had a blue? Then that way you get two tones. Yes, that's like, I'm loving how you're thinking. So that way y'all, yes, you could layer them and have two or three. And remember, if you wanna crack them, um, we weren't going into cracking today, but we have a cracked gesso that you can put underneath any of these colors and it will crack it in a really pretty small fissure crack, but it'll also give you that white gesso look. Yes. Ms. Fox asks, could you use this technique on floors? No. Uh, milk paint is not really good on floors. You, the the one-step paint is great for floors because it has a binding agent in it that will make it really hardy. Just make sure you clean it good. But no, this needs to stay with furniture. Yes. Sandra says, how would this look on a wood bathroom countertop? Um, countertops, here's the thing in, in working with this on a top, a countertop in a bathroom is gonna get a lot of water and a lot of wear and tear. So do it on the cabinet front and then use the one-step paint um, on top of the counter itself or stain it and seal it, yes. Amy says, what if you wanted it to stay a lighter color? What color wax would you use? You can still go with the light antique wax and just don't put it on quite so heavy. Um, you can go with the clear wax if you want to, but, um, Look at, like, here's the other difference. This is staying pretty light. Now, this is a light gray color that I was working with, but I, this has some dark wax on it. So here's the deal. I'm feeling of this. I'm wanting it to dry. Do we have a, um, do we have something, Jean, that I can just fan this really quickly? Um, my cardboard's not really big. 
Um, okay. I'm grabbing this fan, so I'll just show you. If you haven't gotten my book, this has 30 years of um, finishes and things in it, and I do go into Toscana a lot in here. That's terrible. That was that was cheap, wasn't it? But it's big. Look at it, and it's like it's fainting. This is exactly what I needed. Okay. I haven't even had a whole lot of coffee. I don't know what my problem is today. Okay, yes. Miss Bibby Lady X, do you antique between each color? You can, yes, it's beautiful. So um, I would, I would antique in between colors, yes. And here's the fun thing. If you take off too much paint, it's almost a happy accident because I'll just dip my finger down in the paint and I'll come back and blob over it and it makes it look like it was antiqued even, even in a more beautiful way later, yes. Anne says, would the beeswax here work on an antique from about 1940? It needs to be cleaned up and waxed. It originally had beeswax covering it. Yes, it's perfect. Um, the one thing, we have them in a larger, Jean, you wanna grab that larger container. You wanna clean it with clean slate first. We have a large container of clean slate. This is just a small one. This will get excess grime, dirt, wax, surfactants off of it, and then come back and do the beeswax, yes. If you are working on an older piece like that, though, you can definitely use the Mind Drum Beeswax. I would use it on there. So, gosh, you all are making me feel the love today. This is awesome. Thank you. All right, so, um, so here's the other thing. I fanned this. I want you to touch it with your hands because if this is still greasy and if the wax is still moving, um, you don't want to apply your dark wax. This is the mistake that a lot of people will make. They'll put the light wax on and then they come and they pop over and they'll put the dark wax on. And what happens? If this hasn't come to tack to where it's not moving, um, you're gonna create a third color and it's gonna be a mess. So please don't mess that up. Jean brought this over to me. So who, who was it that asked that question about her? Anne. Anne. So Anne, you need to order the Clean Slate. It's one of the best products. One, one of the best selling products we have. It cleans pieces. It'll get the wax out of your brushes, uh, but it'll get anything off that you, you don't want on your piece before you start to paint it or wax it. All right. Was there a question, Instagram? Yes. Miss Susan X, what's the difference of aged wood in reference to the wax choice? I don't know that I understand that question. Do you, Jean? What's the difference between aged wood? Maybe reclaimed. Reclaimed? Oh, maybe with reclaimed. This was just an older oak. It was reclaimed. But yes, you can start on any wood. That's why I was saying, if, if you go and get a piece from a woodworker, if he makes a piece for you, you can definitely use it. So let me, before I answer that next question, let me show you. So I've put on my light antique wax. This is the beeswax in it. It's got that beautiful coloring because you have to wax, um, you have to wax the milk paint. These guys are married, y'all have heard me talk about, this is me and this is Jean. So, um, but it only takes a little bit to be dynamic with this, just a tiny bit, don't overdo it and make sure that this has come to tack. So, where a piece would normally age, um, we're gonna start first. So, load up your brush, it needs to be even, but I want you to offload it to where there's hardly anything on here because you can also mess it up. You can always add more wax, but you can totally mess up your product project with too much. All right, so now I'll ask, I'll answer that question. Ms. Diva X, can you push away any heavy paint around to give a more aged effect? Yes, you can. You totally can. Now here's, and this is what I was working on. Look at me for just a second. When I was painting these, it's about composition. When you are looking at the size, like when I'm working on this, this piece right here, I tried to make the amount of um, area that I was distressing and pulling off to be in relationship to the size that I was working on. So when you're working on a drawer front or a top or whatever, you want to, that each section, you need to be looking at the oval eye track and the composition of it. Very, very important. So when I talk about oval eye track, it's like, so when you look at this piece, right now my, your eye's gravitating to right here, but then it should go over to here. And then this is a little heavier, it'll go around. So there's a balance to it, but I didn't want to carry it and get it too much. Um, but I have done so many pieces before, especially like benches, where it's only like 20 or 30% paint left and they look amazing. So yes, you can do that. And it's very successful with this technique, yes. Rebecca says, older furniture from the 1920s 
mostly has a red base. Can I do this look over it or should I just remove the dark stain? I would remove the dark stain, yes. Get it down, get it raw, strip that off, sand that off, and be able to start with this finish. And it, it'll it'll still look fabulous, yes. And Tony asked, does this have to be waxed or can you use a water-based top coat? You take away from the beauty of the finish when you put a top coat on top of this. The wax, that's why I was telling you the stories of in Paris, in Italy, with these pieces of furniture that have been painted and they've been around for hundreds of years. When you use natural waxes, the patina gets that much more beautiful. The longer the wax is on there, the hardier and harder it gets. Because with our wax, I put in natural beeswax for the color and I put in carnauba wax for the hardiness of it. A lot of people don't realize they use carnauba wax on bowling alleys that it gets harder and harder and it's resilient to use. So you're never gonna get the beauty and the look when you put any type of polycrylic or even a matte sealer on top of milk paint. I really want you to try to get used to working with the, with the waxes. All right, but we just wanna use them correctly. So let me show you as far as antiquing this. So loading up your brush, remember to offload it. Guys, if you are just now tuning in, please go back and watch this from the beginning. Um, do hashtag replay and tell me where you're from. I need to know where you guys are from. Tell me things that you want to be able to learn. Um, if you're not part of our before and after group, you need to join it because everybody's on there being able to enjoy the bragging rights. All right, so camera guys, let's look, let's look at this closely. Look at this side that I just added some dark wax. Do you see how subtle that is? How gorgeous that is? Look at this side so there's not. Don't overdo it. So look how I'll just start on the, the edges to be able to kind of give some age. Look how very little there is on here. I can always add more. Now, after I work on the, on the edges, very subtle, you can't really see it, but in long term, I'm telling you, it's gonna make a big difference. It's like a shadowing effect. See that already, how gorgeous that is? Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes people will say, can I do this on my kitchen cabinets? My answer is yes. We had them on our kitchen cabinets for years and they were beautiful. People would walk in my kitchen and go, oh my gosh, these, ki these cabinets must have cost a fortune. And I was like, no, that we just had a, a cabinet shop make them and then we uh, painted them ourselves with this look. They're, it's fabulous. So I got that a little bit darker than this one, but go back through and you can watch it um, as far as the, um, in the very beginning, how I show you how to paint this. Definitely last but not least, but I wanna show you this blue. This is gonna be a new color that we're gonna have out. Um, it's pretty garish there, but it has to start out brighter. Same thing, I just mixed it up. I put it on with my Seawolf sponge, but I wanna show you what it can look like. Now, what I did on this one, let me get my, let me get my antiquing glaze out again, just to be able to show you. I'm gonna take just a little bit of this. Here's my antiquing glaze, come back over it. Mary Jo wants to know, how often do you need to touch up the wax? Maybe once a year. Um, it's, not, it's not necessary. It's the, the longer it's on there, the longer it cures, the prettier it is, the better it's gonna be. Is there a, is there a shadow, can they see? Okay. All right, so now, I'm, now after I've got that pass on there, what do I do? I press in a little bit more. I press in a little bit more and I'll, I'll start to pull that up and get that worn. I love that all of y'all love things that are worn natural like this. Guys, you can never get this look with sandpaper, never. Coming back on my antiquing glaze and pulling that through. Now, I'll pat that. I need to let that dry. I can hit it with a hair dryer and it will literally, um, take five minutes and that'll be dry. But what I wanted to show you what I did on this one. So this is what it looked like before. Instead of using the light and the dark wax, guess what I used? I used our cerusing wax. So I did use a brush and I just came back. Let me squirt some of this out on a piece of cardboard. I just came back with, I'm being messy today, aren't I? Took a little bit of that cerusing wax. Loaded up my brush, make sure there's not too much excess on there. 
And then I came back in here, always, you know, how when I do it, I cross hatch. Don't do too much. I focused more on the, the edges and fanned, worked my way in. Look at that. I try to have it where there's some areas that are a little bit brighter blue than others, and this one can be a little bit whiter. And then after that comes to tack in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, once it's dry, then I'll come back and I'll buff it. And it's that beautiful little vintage chic cupboard blue that putting some white stoneware in that would look like a million bucks. Yes. Miss Alima X, can she use this finish on her dining room table? I hate to say this. I feel like I'm just being this bad person today. And you're all like, great, I want to do that on this. Here, here's the, the answer to your question. They, the question was, Facebook is over here going, I can't hear the question. What was it? Can I do this on my, my tabletop? You can do it on the base of your table. But as far as on the top, on something that's going to be used all the time, um, I would be careful. If it's a display, like if it's a demi loon, if it's a console that you have in the entry hall, yes, you can. We have two pieces in our um, offices as you come in and they have this finish on them. But as far as something, I just think about small children and spaghetti, you know, and all that stuff, using it on a table day in and day out, um, you might need to be careful with that. But I do do it on tops of, of demi loons or chest or whatever. So if that answers that question, but I definitely use it on the bottom. Yes. Ms. Susan asks, will, the, will this be available in milk paint and one-step paint, and when will it be released? This color will be released next week. So um, the, near the end of next week, we'll have this available. So um, I'll make sure to send out, I'll do a post. I may jump on as a Facebook Live because I have wanted this color for so long. It's absolutely glorious. But the other one that I showed you today, as far as being able to do, that will go in any room, um, in any um, design is Marche Gray. This will go anywhere, guys. You can't, you cannot mess this up, as well as the black. So these are all um, just three incredible finishes and different looks that you can get on your furniture. Yes. Miss Fox X, could she use, use this technique on her mirror frame? Definitely you can use it on your mirror frame. Now what I was showing you today is this was started with raw wood. Um, the other thing too that I meant to show you, because always when I do it with black, I'll always come back and use the dust of ages. So when I did the same technique that I did here, when I was working with my black, right before my, wa my wax came to be completely dry um, and just at a little bit of tack, I added the dust of ages. That's what gives that beautiful color. And I'll put that everywhere and then buff it. So if you've not worked with the dust of ages before, it can make a huge difference in the look of your finish, um, how the sheen can come up, how beautiful it can be, especially leave some down in the crevices um, around your escutcheons or your hardware, but it can make a big difference um, in the quality of the finish. And it'll also um, increase the sheen, the natural sheen. One thing that you need to make sure that you do after this comes to tack and you buff it, don't buff it too much. This is not about it being really, really shiny. We want just a little sheen. That's what we call patina, like it's been used, like the oil from your hands have touched it um, over many, many years. But I don't want it too, too shiny. That's why I want you to stay with the wax and stay away from polycrylics and things like that. So anyway, well guys, thanks so much. Thank you for making me feel loved today. Continue to um, ask us questions. We go back on there. Jean and I actually look at a lot of them as well as the people in customer service because we want to make sure you know and understand um, our products. If you can't tell, we're incredibly passionate about what we do. We develop the products um, and we love teaching people the reason why, why we created something. And you cannot get the look um, that we want and that I'm showing you here today with any other product on the market except for us because we love being able to show people how to do true Renaissance style finishes uh, that would make our, um, our Italian and our French forefathers very, very happy. Have a fantastic weekend, guys. Let's go buy some furniture. Bye.